Welcome everyone to this Ever Fan Show. We have Francis and Paul here today with us and we are going to discuss with you about uh, how Paul contributes to Shadow of the Conqueror and also we're going to talk about another side project that we had the idea of um, on our on my last live stream where I was painting a miniature. Um, so hi Paul, how are you? Hello Dylan, doing very well. Okay, I'm hearing a bit of um, a loop. Maybe uh, mute on your uh, on I gotta your computer. Mute yeah. Turn everything off. So there is that better? No. No. It's, uh, is it? Why is it doing that? Let's see. More options. Disconnect audio. How about that? Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. First try. <laughs> okay. What have you guys been doing? Uh, we've been doing very well. Excellent. And, Excellent. and you? Very well. I'm so busy these days. It's kind of crazy. It, it, you're either unemployed and frantically searching for work, or you're just so busy that you're up to your eyeballs. <laughs> I I can understand the feeling. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you're both keeping busy then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the work is not what's missing. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, well, good. So yeah, I was watching your stream and uh, on like an hour delay or whatever, and I noticed you put up that that uh, comment about, oh yeah, we might make some miniatures. I was like, oh, I know how to make miniatures. Pick me, pick me. So I figured <laughs> uh, we'd throw this together and kind of float some ideas. It's amazing. I'm learning this right now. <laughs> well, well, I, I discussed a bit uh, with you, Francis. I think no, no. Okay. Nope. Well, well, I sent you a picture this morning of a sketch yeah. I did. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's uh, <laughs> show this right now. If uh, uh, while we're here, so uh, share screen. So I made a quick sketch this morning. Um, I, I didn't get your feedback, uh, Paul, for, for this sketch. It's a, a sketch based on uh, uh, costume ideas that we had and uh, uh, on Dawson for uh, um, for many of uh, Dale is the Conqueror. Hmm. Uh, it's it's very rough and I'm not the best artist in the team. I just wanted to uh, whip up something quick. Uh, of course, if I gave this to Torbjorn, he would make it much better. But uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to, to get the idea out there. I also noticed you put, to, um, I don't know if we can show the, the concepts that you sent me earlier, uh, just of like the, the quality level that we're shooting for. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, guys. Let, let me go here in our. So I was uh, showing uh, these miniatures from the Artisans Guild, uh, yeah. which I, I love their work. Uh, I I print their miniatures, and um, I said to Paul, if we're doing miniatures, I want something on this kind of quality. I want us to have a very high level of uh, detail and very um, interesting uh, miniatures if we do them. Yeah. And yeah, they look amazing. Oh yeah, those are those are top notch. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I can't show off anything like that level of detail. Most of the time when I do commissions, I'm uh, doing it for people who are working on a very limited budget. So like less than a hundred bucks. And they're uh, so I can't make something like this for them, and uh, so it's always it's always fun to have an opportunity to do something really high detail and uh, in high quality. <laughs> and I think people from uh, all of our fans that are here for the film are gonna want to have a very high quality mini. Um, now the other thing that I, I, we were discussing last time is uh, how we're going to do it because uh, 
really it's much easier to just deliver an STL file and allow people to uh, print their own uh, Shadow of the Conqueror miniatures. Sure. Um, but Rather than go through production and yeah, molds exactly. made and all that stuff. Uh, of course, not everyone has uh, 3D printers. Uh, so it's a balance of, okay, do we make it accessible for everyone or do we make it accessible only for the people that have uh, 3D printers? Sure. And one of the things you have to think about in 3D printing is, uh, oh, I don't know if you can see my screen, but... Uh, this is a 3D model I did for someone, and they had a, a particular 3D printer in mind. Uh, uh, they didn't just... have a... I think, Dylan, you have a, a stereolithography... Uh, what is it called? A resin? Yeah, I have printer. a resin printer, yeah. Yeah, and so that can do extremely fine detail, very, very thin walls, uh, very fine details, and and, and uh, excellent, excellent form control. When someone's using something like a, an extruded normally I printer, or I, a, I, normally I print at uh, f point uh, at uh, five microns. Oh yeah, yeah, so, a half a millimeter. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's very tight tolerances, and a lot of people don't have access to a printer like that, like you were saying. Um, but a lot of people do have access to one that'll go down to a millimeter or you know uh, something along those lines and uh so this particular model um i'm sure you'll be able to recognize it <laughs> this is camille from uh, league of legends but it's designed for one millimeter wall thickness so you can see the fingers are all kind of melded together there yeah. and uh everything's kind of designed so well, that it won't be too just the fact that anything. you show this uh knowledge of like okay it needs to be like this if we are making making it for a 3d printer uh an fdm 3d printer that can't get uh, all that detail yeah um, yeah now so what i was thinking is if we're gonna if we're gonna go that route we'd make two versions one for like a you know fdm a, a real low res model uh, as high res as it can handle and then one that's got all the details for someone who's got like you or, or other fans have a, a high detail printer that they want to print models on. Yeah, and our plan is to for the resin printers to have them th uh, pre-supported as well, so that yeah. uh, they they print uh, correctly and uh, people don't have to spend two hours supporting their models. <laughs> right, sprueing it all up. It's not really sprueing, but yeah. But it, it depends. It our plans actually to uh to sell the files if we do or yeah. sell the miniature yeah yeah because i mean i think we we already looked a bit uh, into uh, companies that would make them and ship them by themselves yeah and uh, so some point could also be a possibility i think i well, think it didn't come that much higher in the price uh, apart from the shipping but yeah it's mainly dealing with the the shipping and all of that um, and the volume, I imagine. And yeah, and the volume yeah. because to get um, a drop shipper uh, from China to produce the the miniatures, uh, uh, package them and ship them to each uh, uh, people that want to buy them, I th we need to sell at least five thousand of them. Mm. No, it's possible. It's possible, but <laughs> I, I mean, we only got two thousand backers on on the Kickstarter. Uh, right, so but there are millions of RPG players. Millions. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> the unlimited market. Yeah, <laughs> there are options. Uh, we're gonna have to see, and uh, uh, if Shad gets into it, he's obviously gonna want one, and he probably will promote them so that would uh, boost the sales but still we need we would need to see a very very big interest in seeing uh, in seeing a mass produced version because STL files we can produce them uh, we, we can just sell the files and it it doesn't have any costs to us. 
but uh, the, uh, to get a mold made and to get a mass manufacturing, I think it's uh, two thousand dollars just to make the mold. If we hire some uh, a company in China, so right, specialist. Could we uh, could we show uh, again um, the Super Dalen uh, drawing? So that pe because there's some more people that would like to see, but yeah, yeah, of course, a miniature of. Um, then right. after that, it we don't know how we're gonna sell them, but depending on on uh, what you guys want to see, uh, we had uh, I when I talked to Paul, I. Uh, through a few ideas around we could either sell the models in individually on my mini factory or um, we could do them through our patreon uh, but the la yeah. last option would be to do a kickstarter for the miniature there's themselves and have specific goals for different models so um, we that could be actually a good idea through the Patreon. Yeah. Like uh, for a certain amount, we can make one miniature of a, a character of the book per month and get them the uh, the files. So you start with Dalen, then you could do Arek and so on. So people could actually collect them all. Yeah, that could be, that could be an idea. That'd be really fun. <laughs> um. But yeah, we need to, uh, and uh, by the way, we didn't discuss that with Shad at, at all yet. Nope. <laughs> we have to. Don't tell Shad. <laughs> uh, uh, this is uh, how I roll. I, I'm going to discuss it with him, uh, obviously, but I need to, I, I said to Paul, I need to have a 3D model uh, to show Shad before we start uh, trying to do anything so yeah like we do since the beginning right yeah. we just do stuff and then we show him and he approves <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully i'll keep going and then uh, the other cool thing is we've already got concept art for all the costuming and all that stuff for for this so i can use all that as a reference so yeah it should be pretty easy to, to whip that together it might take a little while working on the spare time but we'll uh, we'll get it done well i as long as it's before the film i'm i'm guessing it's uh <laughs> and was it you francis that said that you wanted a a, a really big version of it of the uh, yeah of dalen yeah of course yeah i want a large or a huge and i'm gonna paint it all and just have it there it's gonna nice. be amazing <laughs> life-size bronze oh yeah yeah and i'm just gonna mold the face of dawson on it <laughs> so it's gonna be like Perfect. a life-size Dawson in the corner of my room. We'll what get a I, photo scan of him. What I'm gonna oh, try yeah. to do is I'm gonna a try to ask uh, Kalamazil if they can send us their 3D file of the uh -huh. of the sword. Of the sword. So it's gonna it could be identical to the LARP version for the oh, yeah. for the miniature. I I think I still think you you'd have to uh, make the some of the parts on the handle bigger uh just for sure. so that they print correctly but uh very doable yeah yeah actually someone was asking uh, maybe a question for paul uh, how would you put the sword on the figure well there are two ways to, oh i should have pulled that up there are multiple ways to do it um the f most obvious is just to mold it in so that it's part of the figure itself and uh it looks good it you know it's there but then you can't use that on any other figures. You can't use it separately. Uh, another way to do it would be, and I've done this for several customers, is to mold it so that the hand is kind of like a grabber, kind of like um, a Lego figure, a like mini figure. Aww. And uh, we, I like to use the same diameter handle as the Lego mini figure. So then you can use any Lego swords or guns or whatever on that figurine. And then you can use that mini sword on any Lego figurines as well. So they're interchangeable. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it's not, I mean, super practical, right? But it's at least something. Well, I I like uh, how uh, artisan guilds uh, make their um, 
uh, modular f uh, minis they they make it uh, um, they they make the the minis with um, uh, the hand completely separate so the hand is ah. molded with the sword but the hands are separate i see yeah so you only have to glue to it a... yeah so you, you just have to glue the hand but you can change the weapons as you like yeah you can see it on this image it. uh Are you pulling one up? Oh, okay yeah if you can just make it bigger uh, <laughs> oh yeah the coin yeah the, the the coin was something that we did that we thought that we might add to the kickstarter oh, but in the end there. after further discussion with shad uh it will be in something that he's planning for defense that so we can't talk about we can't talk about it so just a, a surprise <laughs> that's coming from him at some point down the line <laughs> uh but the it's an amazing surprise <laughs> yeah uh, if you can go to back to the coin, uh, yeah, absolutely, Paul. Uh, so th uh, it, this is the mas uh, the master of the sword uh, coin, the 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 badge that uh, Dalen is wearing. Um, and yeah, like Francis said, at first we thought that we were gonna uh, mass produce them and give them to the backers uh, for the Kickstarter. But after discussion with Chad, Chad wanted to keep them for another project. Uh, we're mm. we're gonna give him this design so that he can uh, use it. Uh, but um, the, uh, we're gonna have a copy of this for uh, for the costume of uh, Dalen on set. Oh, okay, we put on a ribbon and everything. Yeah, sweet. Well, there you go, folks. If you want, uh, if you want the design, there it is. You'll have to wait for the three D model. But maybe one thing we could do, uh, if uh, we do, let's say, a Kickstarter with uh, the 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 three D uh, miniatures, we could include yeah. the the metal, the three D printing metal file uh, metal mm. with it as well. Could possibility be, to ask chat about that we could even use it as a base for the menu <laughs> oh okay shit. okay there you <laughs> go. the dalen one yeah yeah, yeah you're standing <laughs> on it instead of the the rocks and stuff yeah I, i'm i'm just throwing Id ideas out there yeah well yeah, someone talked cool. about bubble heads <laughs> oh bobble heads there you go 3d printable bobble heads yeah, buy a normal man. one take it off put the 3d printed thing on got like a Darth Vader body or whatever. <laughs> oh my god, that would be great. A Darth Dalin. <laughs> I wonder who Arik would fight in dead battle. I'm referring to the YouTube channel. Mm. Who Arik would uh, fight with? That's a good one. Uh, well, you see, this is something that I would do. I, it's like, been a long time since I've watched uh, one of the dead battles. Yeah. Uh, I love, uh, well, maybe some people will know him, but I love Richard Rall from uh, the Sword of Truth series. And he, mm -hmm. he's like a war mage. And uh, I think he could be a really interesting battle since uh, he's super OP. And Arek is too, so yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know who would win. Arek is... Uh is an art typical arc uh, I, did i say that correctly yeah yeah archetypal um priest from like role-playing games so he's a mm -hmm. warrior that can heal at the same time um yeah, or paladin or something yeah a kind of paladin uh so what kind of paladin character that uh is in pop culture that could fight him i'm not sure is there any? Uh... There's always uh, the guy from the Warcraft series who's. Um... Emilio asks, uh, w "Will the sword face up or down?" I'm not sure what your. Uh, uh, well, I, if you I'm, use the I coin think... as mini base. Well, yeah. you can orient it in any way you want. If it's. Uh... 
Yeah. For a mini base. Yeah, it depends if we want him standing in battles, battle ready. Just, I don't know. That that could be also if we do a Kickstarter for that. That could also be uh, something that every time we reach a certain milestone, we create a new position for the Daylin, and it just comes. Oh, as a that could that it. that that could be a, a great idea. So we could have, let's say, Daylin, Arek, uh, Lyra, and Qseg, all as basic miniatures for the for this project, but then it, with different milestones we, we, you could get different poses and different <laughs> weapons and there like a version of dalen without this gauntlet or with this gauntlet are we th still thinking doing uh hand separate so you can switch them around if you want or yeah yeah i think that could be nice that's a neat idea is that just are they ball joints there and then you put yeah. them in or how's that work uh, well, most of the time, what they do, I think, is they put a small, very small magnet. Ah. So you have them on both, and you just clip. Well, clip the the, the, the ones I there. print, I just glue them together. But uh, I I guess if you have very because on the hands, the hands are very small on miniatures. So you to get a magnet in there. Uh, ah well, it works, but uh, it's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did order from a Kickstarter for that. And it's... Someone's playing Peekaboo in Dylan's stream. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, stay in your corner. You're punished. Damn it. She never listens. <laughs> um... <laughs> okay. Um... But yeah, if uh, if and we... we could also do the 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 the, the sky ships. Oh, it was sky cool. ships. Well, we already have the models for that, so it's... yeah. But it would be a top tier, you know. Like if you reach a certain, <laughs> yeah, they come with it. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, we we would just we need to that... split them so that they can be printed because to print them <laughs> it would be so large. Uh, but yeah, that could be something big, that big we FDM do with, printers uh, could do them, but uh, like I, I can't put that on my Elegu. <laughs> oh god, no! But uh, this is something that could be done through the Patreon, though. Like, if you're uh, if you're a member of the Patreon for a certain amount, then we can send you the uh, the file, stuff like that. Okay, it's just, just give me a sec. I need to uh, go, but you can uh, keep going. Okay, good. <laughs> Bring Stefan. She's interesting. <laughs> We're trying to fit it on the coin. Yeah, I was going to put it on the base so then you could be a super mini. Oh. So actually, uh, since uh, it's the first time we get you on the on the on the live, uh, how did you get into uh, 3D modeling? Yeah, um, I started 3D modeling stuff when I was like 13, I think, and um, just kind of, just kind of never stopped. I guess I started doing it on um, Ray Dream Designer Four, I think, and they had a copy on the shelf in, was it Egghead, the computer store? There's like okay. a computer store called Egghead, I think. And yeah, we would that, go there and buy computer games and stuff. Yeah, that tells me something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so there's a this like 3D design software, and I'm like, oh, that's what I really want. And it was like a hundred dollars or whatever. And uh, <laughs> so my parents got it for me for Christmas when I was 13, and I just wore the soles right out of that that piece <laughs> of software and uh, upgraded a couple times. It, it turned into Carrara, and I think Carrara is still around. I think they're still selling copies. But at some point, I switched over. Well, I, I know when it was. It was right after. Um, film festival in college. This is in 2006, and I I make short films and stuff. And I made the short film in in Carrara, and it was just brutal. Like it wasn't it wasn't up to the task. And uh, I'd been dabbling in Blender, and I was like, man, I'm gonna. This is the last time I'm gonna use this software because I'm gonna just go to Blender full full on. And uh, so that was 2006. Never looked back. And in 2008, I started doing commissions, uh, just little stuff here and there. I maybe one or two a year or so. Put up a website, 
and uh, then they start trickling in, and now I do maybe a is commission th- a month. Is roughly. there is there somewhere that people can uh, send commissions to you? Yeah, if you go to 3d.triop.com. Uh, send me the link, and I'll add it in the description. Oh, man, technology, how do we do this? Pull up the <laughs> thing. Pull up the chat. Well, while you're doing this, uh, Misting Wolf is asking, how long did, uh, does it take you, Paul, to make one of those models? Uh, it depends. It's usually it's at least an hour to set it up and get it done and communication and stuff like that. Um, for something like this, that's not too complicated. Uh, I think that took me four hours, maybe three or four hours. Figures are difficult, of course, because the human body and the face and everything, people are very familiar with it. So if it's wrong, it's really wrong. Um, for something really simple, let's see, what's something really, oh, here's the here's the, um, the weapons. Oops, we don't have a picture of the weapons. Well, there you go. So there you can see the, the figures holding the weapons that are Lego scale. Oh, the weapons cool, themselves yeah. probably only took an hour uh, to do. And then each of the characters maybe took like eh, 45 minutes, maybe. Those are very, very low poly, simple ones. Uh, so they weren't too difficult. <laughs> um, what's the most complicated? This is probably the one of the most complicated commissions I did. This is the sun shot from Destiny 2. Yeah. And um, this must have taken me like 20 hours because of all this all this detailing on the on the body and it was just an immense amount of 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 uh boolean operations because blender's not great at booleans and so if you get too many of them going at once it'll just make errors all over the place and so you got to like do a few and then bake them in and then do a few more and bake those in and uh get them all lined up and getting all the reference because of course they don't have nice isometric reference for this and so you've got to be looking at screenshots of the game and like oh you know what's this thing and can you see the underside you can never see the underside of the gun so you have to kind of guess at it so this thing took me just forever and then on top of it all that that uh cylinder mechanism actually swings out there I, there's a video here if you want to swing at it out. but yeah so you can so you can swing it out and remove it and put another one in just like a revolver right and so oh, there's shit. a little button on the back here this this button back here uh you push that in and it releases a little release there's a live spring inside so it's all it's all there and uh so it's actually a working a working model as well so that was that was probably the most complicated thing i've ever done other than doing film work obviously film work is you know you doing models for for special effects shots and things those can get pretty complicated so yeah anywhere from like an hour to 20 hours plus and uh what is your rate do you do like a rate a fixed rate for the model or per hours uh usually what i do is the customer will send me a, an image or something and say hey i want to make this thing or I want it to be 3d printed or something like that and then i ask them the three questions that you always need to know what is it exactly that you're trying to do how long do you have to do it and what's your budget <laughs> and that really de- determines the scope of the work so usually they'll be like, oh, well, I want it for like under 100 bucks and it can be whenever, it doesn't matter. But sometimes people are like, I need it by the end of the week and budget is no question or whatever. So there's uh, there are varieties of, of constraints on the thing. But then usually I'll give them a, a price. I'll be like, well, I can do this and I can have it done by this time and here's your, your quote. And then um, it invariably takes like two times as long as I thought. And so <laughs> then I'm like, hey, this took two long, times as long as I thought. Uh, you can pay me whatever it was that I quoted you, and that's fine. If you want to pay me extra, I'd appreciate it. And so that's usually what I end up doing is giving them a, a 50% discount, and everyone's happy. And it's mostly hobby <laughs> anyway, so it's not like I'm gonna you know go hungry if I don't make the make the targets. Well, yeah, it's different when you do something you love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, the, mo- the most important thing in these cases is uh, you need to be doing something that. Uh, you like and uh that you're not uh getting annoyed by doing it yeah the the destiny gun is amazing yeah that was yeah that was quite a project this guy for whatever reason this is the the orange um surround on ripley's watch in aliens she's got that wrist watch and it's got two of these casio 
watches on it. And for whatever reason, uh, cosplayers like dressing up as Ripley. I don't know, getting chased around by aliens, I guess is their thing. And so uh, I've got a, a model of this on Shapeways and uh, I sell like two or three a month. It's crazy. And this has been going on for years. So I don't, I don't know, this is probably, <laughs> I've made the most money off of this tiny dumb model uh, than probably all my other stuff combined. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of a, it's kind of a crazy thing, but there you are. <laughs> and that was a commission. Someone commissioned me to make it. And then I was just like, oh, I'm gonna sell copies and-, and You know what you selling, should do? So. Oh yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure you could, you would be allowed to do it, but uh, they still haven't made them, or maybe it's just not available. But the Pokedex from Pokemon, oh, I get yeah. asked that all the time where I work, and it's just not possible to get it. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know if they're trademark. And... Does it look like a Game Boy? Uh, kind of, yeah. But well, no, I, they changed okay. a lot. I, I'm gonna the say years. so. I'm gonna say something. You can't say it's the Pokedex. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But if you do something similar and call it a uh, whatever uh, phone case, Pokedex phone case, I already did it. iPhone yeah, six. I'm not even. Yeah, I'm not even sure it's made by the Pokemon company. So yeah, who knows? I guess that's because point. I. If you watch, if you look on Thingiverse, there's a lot of uh, 3D models that are. Not for from Warhammer at all. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, actually, yeah, you, you photo see, scan it in and clean it up. We mentioned Pokedex, and there's already someone going, "Oh my God, the OG Pokedex!" See, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't make sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, if someone wants to commission me to model them a Pokedex, uh, 3D.tryop.com. Let's see if I can. I send it to you in the in the link. Yeah, right it's there. already in the description in the description so anyway and it's got link here so you can go and see a bunch of this stuff i did before uh there's a bunch of things made a guy from ruby okay but uh can, can we go back to seeing uh absolutely let's uh, get back on things topic. uh, uh <laughs> about uh, shadow of the conqueror just because shadow of the conqueror uh this is the skyship that i made for the uh okay. the pilot how long and did this took this wasn't too bad. This is probably uh, probably six hours. Oh shit! Just that. Oh. And the the nice thing about this is that the the way I model it. Let's see if I can. Yeah. So here's the all the reference art, and that really really helps, guys. If you're gonna ask for a commission, having good reference art is oh it's it's the best because it makes my job so much easier and it makes it so much <laughs> easier for you to get exactly what you want. So like, good reference art is key. Even if it's just like a and sketch or something. Torbjorn did uh, an no, amazing sketch. job. Yeah. There. Yeah. So these are all Torbjorn's uh, reference art. And these are just like projections front, back, right, left, top. And uh, so I put all these in. And then I made the hulls. So this is like just, a, well, it's not solid, but you can see they're just, they're just kind of the general shapes of the hull. And then that determines the shape of this. So if you go in here and mo modify this, you know, want to make this wider or whatever, um, it just it it modifies everything all at once. And so that was really fun because uh, it kind of breaks it at the same time. But <laughs> yeah, it can, it can. You have to you have to fix this. You know, this is this is too far over uh, there. It, what it's doing is it's got a, a solidify on top of a, a shrink yeah, wrap. Yeah. Let's see if I can. So it's it's doing a shrink wrap on the geometry, and then it, it solidifies it to make it thicker, and then just mirrors it. So these are all in reality the geometry is way out here. So if you let's see if you turn this off, uh, you can see it's all just floating out here in space. But because the shrink wrap pulls it on in onto the hull, then it can. It can do that. So it's got it on all these. All the railings are like that. All the railings up here are like that. All these little ladder pieces are like that. Uh, all the the portholes and everything. And so that's super do, cool. At that point, yeah, it, it well, it's really fun because now I can make a version like this. And it's, it took like less than an hour just to put this together because it's the same thing. I just deleted some parts and moved the hull around. Or you can make like a bigger version that's you know bigger and taller and wider, and it all lines up. So. 
that was really fun. That was a fun model to work on. And again, like the Torbjorn's reference art is just really, really nice to, to work from. And, and change, changing the materials and, uh, and, and colors is super quick as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can drop different, uh, different materials on here. Uh, you know, change this to, instead of gold trim, you could use it all. Let's see. Change it all to steel or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Blender is very nice as software, but uh, I was really happy how this, this came together and uh, how easy it is to work with and modify. So if we wanted to make like a whole line of ships that are kind of this general shape, you can almost have it, have the computer do it itself, you know, to make five or 10 different varieties. But haven't seen it yet in the, in the art. So hopefully we'll be able to, oh, actually, no, you guys have seen these before. Uh, Torbjorn put the 3D models in his um, mock-up for uh, for high dawn, yeah, yeah. You can see him flying around there, and so those are those are these. So yeah, you have gotten to see him benefit from it a little bit. Hey, I mean, we we could show the uh, the treaty video that you've worked on too. Yeah, that's what I wanted we to never show. We showed it, so we could oh. show it. Yeah, the little uh, the little intro thing. Yeah. yeah uh, do you have it? Uh, do you want to open it? Let's see. Well, since you have it. Uh... Since I'm showing my screen already, pitch. I don't know if I've got the latest copy. No uh, exclusive stop uh, stuff tonight. Is this the one? <laughs> nope, that's me. No one wants to look at that. Title test. Yeah, that that's it. But uh, that's probably an earlier version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, no, if you've got okay, it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get it here. And there's the music on it and, and everything, so it's always nice. Just, yeah. just, just give me a few seconds to go and get no the. No problem. But uh, if there's anything else, I guess I could pull up that uh, that cliff side thing. We made this whole 3D model of a, a cliff to have as a background. Cliff face. Here we go. That was a fun project too. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to, to show it afterwards, I think, because now yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, yeah, the screen is not being shared, but uh, okay, we'll we'll show it after. No problem. Uh, title reveal, test comps version twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Take 12 okay. So so uh, basically, we wanted to have this, uh, in the. Um, the Kickstarter announcement, but yeah. it uh, it wasn't exactly what we wanted to do, and it didn't fit in with the 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 rest of the video, and it really was annoying because Paul and uh, Charles both both worked on this uh, for a long time. <laughs> And it was really sad to just cut this video uh, out. So, but here we go. We're gonna show it today. On. No, it's ten <laughs> seconds of glory. While Dylan may not have noticed the talk about the trains in Everfall, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw it. I just uh, uh, but go ahead. You, we can talk about it. I'm playing an, an earlier version at the uh, at the same time, um, version eleven, just so that uh, l let's show a few versions so people uh, see the uh, the process that went into it. Progression, yeah. So that's before we changed the title. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then if we go, let's say to version nine, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to skip a few versions just uh, to, uh, so the, the changes pop out. Yeah. <laughs> Major change. Um, but yeah, let's talk about, uh, trains and Everfall, if you want. Okay. So that's before the sky ships were included. <laughs> so it was just the the zoom in with the title. Mm. 
but you had done the cliff, but you hadn't done the the skyship yet at that point. Oh yeah, yeah. So the because the the cliff that's on the side here uh, was made by Paul, uh, but the foreground was made by Charles, and that version is before you came in, right? Um, uh, I think yeah, I think so. Well, I I hadn't made the cliff before I came in. He yeah. had a, a still image, I think, that he was just rotoscoping in, kind of. Which actually looked pretty good to me. I don't know why you need me at all, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the skyship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the skyship made it uh, much better, and that's like the version two, so it's earlier on uh, uh, so you can see the change as it uh, as it Developed. moves forward yeah. yeah 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 that was a fun little a fun little shot to work on so uh, you were talking about trains francis so yeah what about yeah, actually trains? Uh, you know, I'm not the most technical guy, the, the most technical guy that, you know, um, so I never gave, like, a thought about train. <laughs> so I have okay. no idea how they would work, but you probably... I, I never thought about it, so... But le let's get into it. Oh, and while I'm up, uh, get our merch. Nice. So <laughs> 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 okay. I'll so get mine soon. Uh, I have yours. It's here. Uh, okay, so... Uh, trains in Everfall. Normally, why trains exist is because uh, it's much more efficient to have the train on its track. Because right. they're, rolling on steel. Yeah, because there's a lot less friction in between the two uh, steel parts. And that's why a train takes a long time to start up and it takes a long time to slow down because it has a lot less friction than something like a car on the road. And that right. makes it quite efficient. And that's why a train can carry a big load uh, for a lot less than a truck can. It's um, also uh, a constraint of the engine. Back yeah. when trains were big, uh, you couldn't make an engine that would fit in a, a trolley or a, a car or a wagon or whatever. You had to make it this gargantuan thing. And then, of course, the roads wouldn't hold it, so you had to make a, a road that could support it. And so you got the railroad. And, uh, and now it, we still use them because the railroads are existing. But if we had jumped straight into internal combustion engine, we might never have made railroads. We might have gone straight to pavement. Maybe uh, in Everfall, the, the point is, I, I I don't see why they would go into trains because right. they have skyships. Because of Darkstone, yeah, exactly. And they would use the same technology of Darkstone and Lights uh, and uh, Sunstones to power the the trains, I'm guessing. Uh, so it's mm. still more efficient to use a train in that case than... But the power efficiency in Everfall is not an issue. Yeah, it seems like they've got unlimited free, clean energy. Well, Shad, so Shad like, well, said that the sunstones uh, decay with time and they... They do, they, they loom, burn out, yeah. They, they burn out. Uh, but it still takes quite some time before the sunstones burn out and i don't think mm. the efficiency of how the light they emit is used affects how long they it takes before they burn out mm. well, so i i honestly don't see why the uh, people in everfall would use trains yeah but they would work pretty much in the same way that trains already work but with sunstone and, and dark there are a few technological yeah. advancements that i know are going to be in <laughs> book two but again <laughs> i won't talk uh, about these 
because they already have Darkstone powered carts, right? Like you, you yeah. can miniaturize that that engine basically so small that it can be on a personal vehicle or even like a personal flying machine. So at that point, you don't need a gargantuan engine to pull a thing. You could have a, a real small engine. Yeah. But they probably would have bridges that were supported by Darkstone. It would make it make bridge construction so much easier if you had a like a permanent anchor material like that. You wouldn't have to build pylons. You wouldn't do have to do suspension well, they, bridges. Well, they just they, have, you, like, they use roads. it like that in Everfall, mm. and that's one yeah, of the yeah. things that we discussed about uh, uh, the Hydon design and uh, how the buildings are made in um, Everfall. Mm. Because, uh, and that's one thing I uh, I dis I discussed with Chad to know how much they would use Darkstone in their buildings. And he said maybe one building in two or two building in three would use Darkstone to stabilize their structure. Mm. So, so it's uh, expensive, but not uh, prohibitively expensive. Yeah, so uh, the lower classes wouldn't be able to use them, uh, but... Mm. A high, higher classes would be able to use them uh, easily in all of their buildings and that allows buildings up to uh, 90 stories tall without the steel beam technology that we have today right or, or unlimited really you could get those crazy yeah, like you could uh, you could get unlimited towers, right they're all wiggly and crazy it's and like, that's matter. It's that's one thing i that. would like to ask shad uh about elevators in everfall mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. another interesting thing because he does mention it in in the book yeah. there's an elevator in the hotel that they're in yeah okay well they should have some around uh idon because yeah nobody wants to climb those stairs <laughs> no yeah exactly that when, <laughs> when i when i saw the the drawings of you and uh and torbjorn of Hydon, i was like Man, why those stairs? The, the, they're in the book, and I show them to Shannon. And he says, "Yeah, that's what I want." And I'm like, <laughs> "Why? Who would walk up all of those stairs?" So those stairs are like, uh, they're like 200 to 300 stories high. Who would Imagine walk? Imagine the glutes, though. <laughs> They probably got like dark stone Sherpas. I'm, I'm imagining, you know, at the base, and you can rent them or whatever. I'm guessing it's for carts mainly, so dark stone carts can go up or things like that. But like, do 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 you really want to go up all of this? You're gonna take a skyship and just a, a skyship taxi and uh, go on. Uh... Well, it's for the taxi. the poor people that can't afford to. They can't afford the skyship taxi okay so they go up to the the upper tiers they spend all our money on beer and then they have to walk home all the way down the stairs <laughs> or roll i guess they could roll down uh, well, i think if you roll down walls. that far i think you're dead man well they've got light bringers to you know help them out <laughs> periodically there's along probably the way. one yeah <laughs> he just seals him <laughs> ooh, 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 wing, ooh, 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 wing. <laughs> actually missing wolf said stairs for commoners elevators for higher classes <laughs> yeah that's probably what would happen right you go to the bar you've got like stools with legs on them for the commoners higher guys get stools that are got a dark stone in them so you don't need the legs <laughs> you just look good yeah <laughs> but is your stool anchored so you can't move with it <laughs> yeah oh, yeah you'd man. have to have like little buttons on it with dark st with a uh, light stone to like free it up in those directions so it could like slide around oh man you could do like air hockey with a puck that's got a dark stone thing in it it's like freed up <laughs> laterally but can't move vertically <laughs> you can have with multiple the of them you can imagine the like you, you can no no forget do... that forget that this is like ice hockey rink you know <laughs> with multiple pucks and the pucks are at different heights and they're anchored in heights right so they can't move up and down So then you've got like three or four but of these going at once. That that would limit like imagine in a hockey where the uh, the puck can go up at all. So it's right, always exactly. flat on the floor. Yeah. Or yeah. always in the air. And you Exactly, yeah. 
and then you could have barriers at different heights so, so that the uh, whole Shad, I'm was... sorry, but we just <laughs> invented one of the sports in your universe. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it's going to be included in, in the short film. So uh, write it down, Francis. <laughs> yeah, it will also be in the second book. We may will make it official. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, folks. Uh, we got your back. <laughs> I don't even know if they they like the idea or not, but uh, oh. uh, Emilio said, "What if those stairs were actually a big freaking escalator?" That's what. Ooh. Yeah, and it could be dark stone powered, so you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And then you and then you really could just roll down them forever. And you could actually put stools like dark stone stools. Yeah, so don't don't fall down wait. again. <laughs> Does the escalator just go up? <laughs> you have different size steps, right? You get like a lock, right? Where you've got like small ones for people and then big ones for carts. And it just like moves up the whole time. It's like a funicular. <laughs> I'd say they just go around, Dylan. Like it goes up and then it rolls and goes back down. So you're inside a cage. Funicular. The whole work. <laughs> like a hamster cage. Just, oh, <laughs> you land on the ceiling. <sighs> Okay, uh, one idea, and I want to have your opinion on this, Paul, because yeah. that would include a lot of work for you. <laughs> oh. Uh, and I, I threw the idea out there, Francis. I, I, you probably see, saw it, but um, do you think we should do, instead of building physical sets, do you think we should do something like The Mandalorian did and have freaking large screens uh, that are modular so uh, we can have whatever set we want in the background. Oh man. So I have a friend named Ian Hubert. He's more famous than me so it's like I'm, and, uh, and he does all he does is CG environments and, and CG special effects combined with live action. So uh it's certainly possible i don't think he does it i think he just does it with green screens honestly he just got green screens in the background and then does but like, i i just the actor is, I, I, is fr from the, the start uh, from the start i said i didn't want to use green screens yeah well but i mean using it, projections what kind of budget do you have is not the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah I, I understand the idea and it's it's an awesome idea it's just kind of expensive right uh, it is but yeah, we if, need to sell a lot of miniatures. A lot. But if like if civilians. miniature screens, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but if if we can do if we can build this, <laughs> um, the possibilities go up so much that I think we could include multiple additional scenes for not that much more. Yeah, well, you could use projectors. That would make it a lot cheaper. That that's uh, they won't be. Th that's very my idea. But uh, then, yeah, you could do four, like if you 4K get a few LED, really high, 4K LED, yeah. uh, not LEDs, uh, 4K laser projectors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then get some high, um, some high sensitivity cameras. Get some yeah. like some uh, whatever those high sensitivity cameras are, so that you can film in low light because it's still going to be well, kind of low I, light condition. I got, I got a, a few estimates for like because we need at least um, nine feet high by twenty uh, feet wide for the background mm -hmm. so it would cost uh, probably twelve thousand dollars of projectors and as love and as i as much as i love like all the idea that you have in the back of your head i am an old school director and i love sets mm. <laughs> yeah yeah but imagine we could we could also do seeds on the same set we could also do uh there's a lot of possibility that opens once you have that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that'd be that'd be awesome. I I'm all in if we can if we can make it work. Uh, I'm just saying that it's possible to get a really good effect and a really good result with much uh, lower tech stuff. And also, like Francis is saying, the having a, at least a few practical things. You know, uh, no, the yeah, thing you need. Hubert you does is he's got like. You obviously need uh, everything that the the you know, that the characters are going to interact with. 
need to yeah. be physical anyways. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, like the background, I don't care. Like if it's a green screen, I don't see why why it shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, we need the props and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it it makes a huge difference. And and for compositing too, you know, having that and that environment. I, I don't I don't I don't agree with you, Francis. I I I hate green screen. Is green screen. <laughs> Uh, because <laughs> it, first of all, the actors can't see what what is gonna be behind them. Uh, so that uh, when you you have a green screen, it, it it's very fake. It's very and you you can't uh, compose your image based on what you you have in your frame. You just see the characters. You don't see what's gonna be behind them. Once when you have a projection. It's the same thing as having a, a, a background. It's just that you can change it at a moment's notice. So I, instead... I've seen this, this video like uh, three days ago, Paul, and it's, it's amazing what they did. I've yeah, seen it side yeah. by side with uh, the... <laughs> put, put, put it in full screen. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear the audio? Is this... Uh, no, I... Uh... You have to share the screen. Yeah, the, yeah, it's shared. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, so this is like. Yeah, I've seen this uh, as well. Yeah. So anyway, this is the the Ian Hubert, the guy uh, is the guy I made the movie with. Um, Project London. We worked on Project London together, and a few other things. But I know him. He's a neat guy, and and he just does amazing things with green screen. So, I'm not saying you have to do it. You know, follow your heart and your artistic vision, but it can be done. No, I'm not saying it can't be done because obviously all the big productions use green screen. Yeah. It's just that <laughs> I think, well, I, I've used green, green screen a few times in the past and I never really liked the results. It always felt artificial. It felt fake. And the actors can't uh, have more difficulty imagining... Uh, where they are yeah there's only a few a few bunch of actors that actually can make it work like yeah you have to be able to envision the 3d space around you in order to really act properly and that's rare so yeah uh we're, we're gonna have to look into it a lot more before we D decide anything like step. that but uh, <laughs> um, okay so but this is the other uh, one of the other films that Ian worked on so he did uh, almost all the CG on this but they also built just tremendous amounts of sets this is prospect I I'm not sharing your screen uh, just uh, that's fine don't uh don't go out of your way have you seen uh tom scott's new video series that seems like an, the ideal solu solution i think it's based in the uk we're gonna look into it uh thanks john uh can you use both it, it could help with like say uh the cha a chase scene or vehicle uh you can make it mix uh, artificial reality and LED screens um, it's obvious when the actors are looking at nothing uh, Zachary <laughs> says uh, what about the blue screen of death <laughs> uh, maybe you you guys could do something special like the crew did for Kingsman the golden circle at the start with the car chase scene. Uh, we'll also look into that. Uh, thanks, Emilio. Um, so, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we are at the one hour, the one hour mark. Um, so, we're going to stop this today. And uh, we're going to have you back, Paul. Uh, Especially if you're working on the miniatures, people are gonna want to <laughs> see this. So uh, make some progress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make some progress, man. But people yeah, want to see the, something. Either a Kickstarter, a Patreon, 
Uh, okay, Patreon so gift. just Whatever. before we just before we leave, way. we we want to know everyone, how would you want us to uh, deliver the miniatures to you? Do you want us to sell them individually? Do you want to have a package deal uh, by Kickstarter, or do you want them to be by Patreon on a monthly basis? So. Every month there's going to be a, one different miniatures because, because I don't think we can afford to uh, do more than afford one per both. month. <laughs> Or do a Kickstarter, yeah, and, and, and make a mass produce. I guess that was option two. Yeah, it's yeah. option two. And if we get a lot of people for, for option two, we could mass produce them as well. Uh, mass producing is just not an option for... Uh, if we sell them on mini factory or through patreon so uh, leave us a comment for that and we'll see you next week on our filmmaking king with and it should be with jesper tones the director of the last padawan so see you then and have a great day